To tell you about lexical, morpho morphological, and semantic correlates uh, of the dark triad personality traits uh, found in uh, texts by Russian Facebook users. My name is Polina Panicheva, and uh, this is a work uh, done by me and my colleagues at the St. Petersburg State University at the Fac Faculty of Psychology uh, as a part of a larger project uh, on uh, a cross cultural study of the markers of stress, uh, well being. Uh, and health in social networks. Um, so uh, I'm going to tell you about our task to find uh, the linguistic correlates of the dark traits and I'll tell you about our motivation. We were motivated by uh, three uh, large directions um, by English background in uh, auto profiling, um, by uh, some a uh, large piece of work uh, in psychology, which is dedicated to the dark traits. Uh, and another important thing to mention here is uh, the Russian linguistic inquiry and word count system. Uh, I will shortly tell you about how we collected our data mm, by means of a questionnaire in Facebook. And I'll tell you about the results, uh, the statistical results, and uh, maybe even more importantly, their interpretation. I will also mention shortly um, some uh, issues of uh, result significance. So, um, our background uh, is concerned with uh, personality profiling, uh, which is mainly done uh, in English language data, but uh, it is also, in the recent years, it is also done with other European languages like uh, Dutch and Spanish. Uh, but um, most of it is dedicated to the big five personality traits, which is probably in auto profiling and in the linguistic community. It is uh, one of the most popular uh, structures uh, to assess personality. And there are um, available questionnaires uh, which you can download for free. And um, one or two of the mm, freely available data sets, uh, linguistic data sets on personality are uh, um, annotated according to the big five personality traits. Um, but there are some works dedicated to the dark traits, uh, which we research here, um, and even to psychopathy. Uh, and uh, works in psychopathy are usually done in uh, forensic psychology, and they are usually dedicated to um, not to uh, online texts, but uh, to uh, self-report um, essays. Um, there are also some mental health issues uh, which are researched in this direction, um, like post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. Uh, the data which is usually um, applied uh, in these cases is um, Twitter and Facebook data, and Twitter is even more popular, I think. Um, although it contains very short texts, which is sometimes not too appropriate for our tasks. Uh, and also self-report narratives, uh, as I've already said. Um, the basic instrument used here is uh, linguistic inquiry and word count, um, by means of which uh, basic word count statistics um, is um, applied. But there are also um, more elaborate methods like um, looking for big grams um, uh, and grammatic properties. But linguistic inquiry and word count um, itself contains uh, content categories. That's why uh, it is so widely used. And the baseline is usually uh, made with look. Um, I would also like to mention that now there are even uh, a couple of um, instruments which are available online, especially in Facebook or Twitter. If you've got an account there, uh, you can log in with your account and uh, take a look at uh, what happens and what the system tells you about your own personality and other sociological characteristics. Uh, however, they are usually based on um, a much larger number of uh, training examples. So 
I would uh, put them into a different category than uh, our research. So, one of the most interesting parts, the dark traits. What is it? It is the three traits which are called uh, narcissism, Machiavellianism, uh, a difficult one to pronounce in English, and psychopathy. Uh, these are uh, related traits, uh, but they are not the same. And this uh, has been studying, uh, studied a lot uh, in psychology works, that they are related and they are intercorrelated, actually. Uh, but uh, they have uh, important differences. Uh, the common, features, uh, uh, the common feature uh, in the three traits is lack of empathy. Um, I need to underline that these are uh, continuous scales, so that every person would have a number on each of these three scales. So they are not clinical. It's not like uh, a binary classification when you can tell whether a person is a psychopath or not. Everybody has um, a, a degree um, in each of these three scales. Um, and we use uh, the short dark trade survey, uh, which was uh, made available in uh, 2014 and adapted to Russian and validated uh, in the same year. Actually, um, it's gaining popularity very quickly now in the psychological community. Um, the survey contains um, 27 questions. That means nine questions per each trait. And each question is a, a five-item Likert scale, which means that um, in every question you uh, have to say whether uh, you agree with the statement a lot or don't agree at all, or uh, somewhere in the middle. And there are uh, five points of agreement. So if you say, I don't agree at all, then you get one point on the question. If you say, I totally agree, you get five points. Um, here is uh, a small illustration of the dark traits. Um, narcissism uh, is concerned with self-focus and grandiosity. And one of the questions in the questionnaire about narcissism sounds like this. Uh, people see me as a natural leader. So if a person thinks that this is totally true about them, then uh, this gives them uh, more points on the scale of narcissism. But there are nine questions like that. So this is not the only one. Uh, Machiavellianism uh, is characterized by careful um, manipulating and um, one of the questions about it is it's not wise to tell your secrets. So uh, people with high Machiavellianism uh, would, um, would not uh, share too much information about themselves and would not behave impulsively. They would plan their tactics carefully. Uh, and psychopathy is characterized by impulsiveness, on the other hand, uh, uh, quite opposite to Machiavellianism. Uh, aggression and a social behavior. Uh, people often say, I'm out of control, which is um, what uh, a person with high psychopathy could tell about themselves. And here are just some funny illustrations from the Russian folk tales, um, illustrations for the three um, concepts. Okay, so just to give a quick overview, uh, a structural overview of uh, these traits, um, all of them are concerned with lack of empathy and um, this results in interpersonal manipulation. Uh, but there are some very important differences, um, like narcissism is characterized by goals which <laughs> are oriented at ego identity. So narcissism um, is not about um, a wish of money or instruments or something like that, but it's about um, ego goals. Uh, whereas Machiavellianism and psychopathy, uh, they are more about material gain. Uh, and Machiavellianism and psychopathy are very different in this temporal focus. Uh, Machiavellianism uh, usually is concerned with planning in the distant future and psychopathy is the opposite. Uh, uh, it's about immediate impulsive reactions. And uh, here I also list the facets uh, of the three concepts. That means in psychology by the word facet you, um, um, you call um, different um, 
kind of different, um, I don't know how to say that better, different factors inside the concept. And uh, with regard to Nazism, this is uh, exploitativeness and entitlement and leadership or authority. Uh, Machiavellianism is characterized by cynicism and tactics, and psychopathy by um, callous effect, manipulation, antisocial behavior, and erratic lifestyle. And this is all outlined very uh, beautifully in this work by Jones. Okay, so I'm going further to the Russian Linguistic Inquiry and Work Count Instrument, or LUC. Um, the initial English look uh, was developed uh, by Penny Baker and colleagues uh, and at the start it was 2001 but they've uh, proceeded developing it and issuing, it, issuing uh, further versions of it. Um, initially it contained uh, about 80 categories um, which were content categories or um, more grammar oriented categories. And uh, with regard to the Russian look uh, version, it was translated to Russian directly. So all the structure of the dictionary uh, in English was preserved. And there was no attention paid to um, phenomena in Russian, which are actually very different from English. For example, this uh, basic distinction between content and function words in English, uh, where the first ones are used to um, look for content categories or topic categories and the function words are used to look for grammatical information or grammatical categories in look. Uh, this distinction, it does not hold in Russian because in Russian, uh, because of affixation and fusion and morphology, uh, almost every word can account for both content and function. Well, at least um, meaningful uh, parts of speech like um, uh, verbs, nouns, and adjectives, they would both present um, a content word uh, and at the same time a number of grammatical categories. Uh, that's why we, we found it um, not that useful to impose the English uh, category structure uh, on our um, categories and we decided to um, induce uh, Russian specific categories for morphology and for content in a bottom-up way and use them in our work. So, um, the task is uh, to obtain significant linguistic correlates of the dark traits in text in Russian Facebook by using a bottom-up lexical approach uh, to obtain lexical features, uh, by also applying morphological analysis to obtain uh, morphological features and to derive content features uh, by using semantic clustering. Um, our data set uh, was collected uh, by applying the Facebook application, which contained um, quite a large questionnaire uh, with questions on well-being, the dark traits, which I'm discussing here, uh, stress, and some demographic features. Um, and uh, it also contained uh, the consent to download uh, public posts by the user. That's how we obtained uh, the texts by the user and uh, the annotation of the text uh, with regard to these categories, especially the dark traits. So for every user, we had a number of their public texts and um, numbers in the corresponding psychological scales. Um, at the moment, uh, we only had uh, around uh, 20 posts per user, uh, which is due to a technical restriction in Facebook. Uh, but uh, we got quite a large number of users uh, participating, which was um, uh, around 8,000 uh, users um, taking part, but only around um, 2,000 users uh, with personal texts. We did not look at the reposts in this work. We only looked at the texts which were written by the user themselves, technically. So it might have been uh, citations or reposts, but uh, technically the users state them as their own texts. So that's what we looked at. 
Uh, and actually, the um, number of, of texts per user was not that big. It was only around um, 300 words per each user, the mean. Uh, so the first thing, the very basic thing we look at, is the features of text length um, by uh, people with different um, values in the dark traits. And here, at once, we can see that uh, Narcissists tend to uh, say more in their texts. So their sentences are longer and their posts are longer, which is even more important. And uh, to the opposite, uh, Machiavellianists uh, say much less. So, and th this corresponds very well to the information uh, we found in psychology that in Machiavellianism, uh, people tend to guard their personal image and avoid oversharing, whereas in narcissism uh, they tend to be expensive and attracting attention. But we proceed to the more exciting part. Um, morphological and lexical features were derived uh, using the pi-morphy analyzer. Um, so we just took the lemmas from there and a number of morphological gramemes. Uh, the most important of them are parts of speech, uh, person and number, both in verbs and pronouns, uh, verb modality features, named entity features, and a number of other features. Uh, how we did semantic clustering in order to obtain content features. Uh, we looked at all the words uh, which occurred in more than uh, five, uh, in texts by more than five authors. Uh, that's how we obtained um, around uh, 4,000 of more or less frequent words. Um, and after that, uh, we uh, obtained uh, word embeddings for them uh, based on a uh, Russian national corpus trained model. Um, and. Uh, we applied the k-means clustering algorithm, but actually we applied a number of them and they're discussed in our previous work. Uh, they're compared and we chose the one that was um, actually the most interpretable for the psychologists to use. Uh, that's how we got uh, around 200 thematic clusters. Um, we got them fully automatic, so we did not correct any clusters, we did not add anything uh, or subtract anything from them and they were quite interpretable. Here are uh, four examples of the clusters. Um, the names of the clusters were given manually. Uh, the cluster authority contains words like election, parliament, committee, <coughs> rada, which is uh, the parliament in Ukraine, Russia. Uh, the cluster friend contains uh, folks, friends, stranger, pal, relative. Uh, the most um, prominent clusters in terms of evaluation were clusters containing names because uh, you could easily see that um, uh, if there's a mistake or if they work well, and actually they worked very well. They only contained uh, actual names. Female name uh, is illustrated here. Uh, this is not all of the content of the clusters. Uh, there were much more words there, but uh, here are just some of the examples. So, and here are our results. Um, for every dark trait, uh, we uh, looked at uh, lexical categories, that means just lemmas of words. Uh, for clustering categories, that means um, content uh, groups of words. Uh, and morphological categories. Uh, and tried to interpret them and actually to connect them to the psychological reasoning about these dark traits. Um, so, uh, in the case of narcissism, uh, we got a number of um, positively correlated phenomena. That's why uh, this table is marked with green. Uh, and the significant features involved self-focus. Uh, they are in bold. Uh, the significant features are highlighted in bold. Uh, they are self-focus, uh, social involvement, and goal focus. And uh, so all of the um, significant features for narcissism uh, included, uh, included content or clustering features. Uh, that means uh, words denoting high or low, uh, words denoting appeal or taking given, and words denoting reasoning. 
Uh, other features were also found there, but they were not uh, significant according to our filtering test. Um, and uh, in our paper, we also try to compare these results with the facets of narcissism, uh, leadership and authority, and entitlement or exploitativeness. Um, with regard to Machiavellianism, uh, most of the features were negatively correlated with it. And what is interesting, um, there is a group of common daily topics which don't seem to indicate any particular trait or factor, but they seem to be like everyday language that a person uses. And that was also very uncommon in Machiavellianism. So it was negatively correlated with it and it was also significant. These are negative action, trouble, face part, number, age, being. Uh, and other topics um, include social involvement, uh, which was negatively correlated uh, with Machiavellianism, positive effect uh, negatively correlated, uh, mental processing, uh, which probably relates to um, not wanting to overshare information about uh, their own mental processes in Machiavellianism. Um, the only uh, positive category uh, correlated with it uh, was politics, but it was not significant. I, I just highlighted it here to show that it kind of stands to the very opposite of all the other categories correlated negatively. Um, I would like to add that uh, in Machiavellianism, morphological categories played a very important role, uh, where uh, the first person plural um, and names and also second and third person words um, were correlated negatively with it. So they indicated uh, negative social involvement. Uh, and uh, also personal detachment from speech was indicated by negative correlation with uh, pronouns and verbs. Um, you could read more about personal detachment um, and social involvement as well uh, by, in works by Penny Baker. They have a lot on it. Uh, so, and with regard to psychopathy, um, there is a number of positive and negative correlations, but the significant ones uh, are positive and they concern politics uh, and basic <coughs> needs, uh, which is also uh, illustrative uh, with regard to the facets of psychopathy, uh, including manipulation, careless effect, erratic lifestyle, antisocial behavior. <coughs> so, Politics probably concerns manipulation and the wish to control. And uh, the basic needs, uh, food, money, money affair, uh, they are concerned probably with callous effect and with impulsiveness. The other features are not significant, although there, are, there is a number of other correlations. Okay, and about the significance issue. Actually, this was um, a big question for us um, because um, we've got a large number of features. When we correlate a large number of features uh, with one factor, um, just by chance, we will get a number of features which will be significantly correlated. This is something we have to filter out somehow. And there is a number uh, of filters uh, applied to this task. Uh, there is the well-known Bonferroni correction, which is said in the works uh, on Facebook uh, to be too strict. Uh, so it actually uh, filters out some important features. It filters out too much. That's why we use the uh, false rate discovery. It's actually false discovery rate. It's called false discovery rate. Um, in order to filter out significant features. Um, another side of significance discussion is that we got very modest correlation values, um, although uh, we got the significance in terms of the p-value. Uh, the correlation value uh, were around um, 1 point, um, 0.1, um, which is not too much on the one hand, but on the other hand, uh, other works, uh, state-of-the-art works, report similar values. Uh, for example, Sumner, uh, they look at the dark traits as well. 
and they've got a similar number of users in their work and their uh, correlations are, uh, correlation values are very similar. And Schwartz, uh, they have um, 10 times the number of users that we are looking at and their values are still around this one, maybe a little bit higher. So it seems that we can we actually uh, get uh, higher correlation values in such a setting? Does it seem logical? Because to me, it does not. Uh, it does not seem that uh, we will get a beautiful, neat picture that the higher is the narcissism for a person, uh, the more they will use uh, a certain word or a group of words. Like, it cannot be very strict, I think, because otherwise it would be too easy and we would not be, uh, I don't know, well, it would be too, um, so it, it seems that a person adapts to their own um, personality traits anyway, and they try to hide them in, such, uh, in this way or another. So, well, it's an open question anyway. I'd like to encourage you to think about it. Um, <coughs> about the prediction experiment, um, this work by Sumner, uh, they do not report really high um, prediction results. Uh, they use uh, 50 percentile uh, classification and 90 percentile classification. And in the first one, uh, in the 50 percentile, they get a little bit above baseline, whereas in the 90 percentile, they don't reach the baseline. Whereas uh, in, the 19%, in the 90 percentile classification, the baseline is 90 percent, obviously. Uh, so the biggest class size. Um, we had comparable results in our classification, but we decided not to uh, say anything about it here. Um, <clears throat> first of all, because uh, we hope to get uh, more data and uh, to repeat our classification and correlation experiments on it. Um, we would also like to identify uh, some other um, less um, probable features there, like um, n-grams, and also look at some technical features like type token ratios. Um, <coughs> okay, I've also said something about the prediction experiment. Yeah, we'd also like to look about the repost language correlations and see if we get anything significant there. Um, in our project, uh, we will also investigate uh, covariates of the dark traits and see if there are any significant differences caused by uh, sex, age and other parameters. And we will probably look at everything together with the language as well. Uh, actually, the project goal is to uh, study the language of well-being and online aggression. So, and this is just a step towards uh, the remote goal. Uh, we would also like uh, to compare Russian and um, US uh, well-being and dark traits uh, if we manage to um, start the questionnaire in English for the English-speaking um, public. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have about five minutes questions and uh, first of all I'd like to ask whether we have the next talk uh, because I have no presentation. Uh, Svetlana Badrunova, Anna Smilerova, Ivan Mikanov and Alexei Maksim. Then we have much more time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think it's a very important work that, that, that you're doing. I've got um, <coughs> one idea that if you are not sticking to linguistics, then probably you might want to take into account other behavioral um, features of uh, <coughs> social network users, because they might be much more predictive than uh, their linguistic behavior, like privacy settings or overall activity, inclination to post, photos and pictures, things like that. And I've got a question.
question I might have asked you it already, but um, this K means stuff. You know, it's unstable. So the next time you run it, you get very different clusters, and all your conclusions might be very different. Are you going to do something about that? Uh, we actually tested a number of uh, uh, the second question first. Uh, we actually tested a number of um, classifications and clusterings. And um, basically, we got more or less the same results if uh, we took uh, the same number of clusters. So uh, this issue, maybe I'd better address you to the previous work uh, on that, on clustering especially. There was a work dedicated to the clustering technique. That, that's it. Um, and another thing is that um, it is a drawback that we cannot, um, we do not actually evaluate our clusters here. Uh, so we only evaluate them by looking at them. That's, um, that's an obvious drawback, but that's how it works at the moment. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for a good point. Uh, and another thing is that um, in our project we've got um, a master's student who is going to look at specifically the behavioral uh, features for prediction. So, whereas in this work we are not really too much concerned with um, prediction and with accuracy, uh, maybe the, the master's student will look at it more carefully and he's going to look at likes and times uh, that the person goes to Facebook, times of their posts, uh, numbers of friends and things like that. Not linguistics, as here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, quite obvious question. Uh, why do you use uh, Facebook uh, instead of you know, Kontakte? Because it is uh, 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 in Russia, it's much more popular. I think. Uh, one reason for that is that uh, we'd like to compare. Uh, populations in Russia and in the US and in order to do that uh, we'd better use uh, the same social network. I'd like to readdress your question to Yenina Ledavaya, my colleague who is here and uh, who knows much more about uh, the collection process, the data collection. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, we were quite surprised to get to know that the uh, core audience of our uh, application that we run on Facebook were people from Chita, Altai, Chilevinsk, Rizain, Kaliningrad, Magadan, wherever. Uh, and they tend to respond to this kind of advertisement that we applied, uh, like take a psychological test, take a real psychological test with the uh, feedback that we really did, uh, then people from the big cities. Maybe they have less advertisement based on their location, and ours were more popular uh, with their uh, network. But we were quite surprised we needed to specially target our advertisement of uh, the application to Moscow and St. Petersburg just to make the audience a little bit more, how to say, balanced. even balanced, yes. So that's why we are quite, as I am a psychologist, and as psychologists we are quite pleased uh, with the opportunity to get a response not from the students of psychological departments, yes, of the second year, but from the people from of uh, all the ages Actually, we get responses more often from people who are above 45 than, the, uh, than 25. Uh, so this is the real Russia. And actually, Russia has uh, about from 20 to 30 million people who are on Facebook, as statistics says. Mm -hmm. So of course, contact is much more widespread. But anyway, 
this is more or less comparable, um, and we we have we hope that our population is more or less real. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, some other questions. Um, you said that you do not use the uh, reports uh, for the uh, how say so for the testing uh, you uh, applied, uh, but um, maybe you could use reports like uh, if uh, a person reported something that uh, he or she uh, is agreed with it. In, in, at least in some way, so you could like uh, use it uh, with lesser weight or something, maybe? Um, yeah, our idea was uh, to look at the repost language in the next step, but we were going to look at it separately. And what you are suggesting is to combine uh, both types of texts uh, to try to make a prediction or to correlate them. Yes, it's a very good idea. Thank you. This one? Yeah. Uh, as you have said, uh, these features are negatively correlated. Uh, mm -hmm. Except for except politics. Except for politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there any uh, explanation? Uh, that they're negatively correlated? No, that just politics is positively correlated. Uh, maybe Jana? <laughs> uh, I, I'll try to. Can I? Uh, have a look. Um, wh what we try to get from this uh, idea that who are those people who have high Machiavellianism? These are people who never talk in vain, who never open themselves, who had less uh, posts on their Facebook timeline. These are people uh, who prefer to keep to their um, to, to keep their um, thoughts. Uh, by themselves. So, um, unlike uh, narcissists or psychopaths, uh, they uh, very rarely open themselves. So, all of our correlations, may, may the most part of the correlations were negative, which we uh, related to the idea that if you are a Machiavellianist, you will never disclose yourself. So. It is a beautiful idea that we got these uh, negative correlations. Uh, the higher is Machiavellianism, the lower are all these red marked uh, topics. Uh, and the only one is which is mm, green, which was positively correlated. Maybe uh, it was related with the, the, this is just a hypothesis. Maybe it was related with the idea to check what others think if they post something about politics and to get a kind of a feedback. Or maybe this was the only very important for themselves a topic, very important for themselves field, which they couldn't help uh, keeping. Mm -hmm. um, so, but all in all, um, the idea that a person with Machiavellianism keeps to the politics is also a very nice, you know, coincidence, or maybe not co coincidence, at least the correlation we have. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I remembered now that um, in all of the three dark traits, we had lexical items uh, highly correlated with them, which applied to politics. These were different words in most of the cases, but the category which unites, which could unite uh, mm -hmm. all of them, uh, would be politics if we do not take strict significance issues. And there was one word which was correlated positively with all three of them, and it's the word president. And we are kind of, mm, we don't let ourselves make too much interpretations on that because uh, it could be more about politics than linguistics or psychology. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. about uh, whether you consider to take uh, comments into account. I don't mean all of the comments, but in certain ways, because it is 
think it's uh, a very large number of them, but perhaps some significant or meaningful comments large enough to update it. Thank I will answer as I was more related to the work on advertisement and API application, API based application. Uh, due to technical restrictions, again, we could only afford uh, download the comments of the same person to his or her posts. <coughs> or if um, coincidentally we managed to download, we managed to attract uh, two friends by our advertisement and one of the <coughs> friends uh, uh, commented to the ball post of the other one uh, and also participated in our questionnaire, then their comments we could download. So it's a very, very uh, rare coincidence that we could download and Facebook doesn't let it do it in any other way. So the idea is that we have to download uh, posts by the users uh, and on the pages of the users who have agreed to share their data. And this, is, this do does not happen too often. So we cannot go to the pages of their friends to download their comments from them because their friends have not uh, agreed to share. So there are a lot of restrictions based on the technical reasons, but we uh, fight with them uh, <laughs> and more or less succeed, I guess. Uh, but working with Facebook is a hard issue. <laughs> Never tried to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.